What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young. I am so excited to be back after our two-week I hate it hiatus break for the winter break for the holidays. Last week, I was in Hawaii trying to squeeze it in. We couldn't make it work, and I decided, ah, don't want to miss my flight, so I'm going to cancel the live stream and reschedule it for another time. But today, we're going to talk all about how you can unlock multiple revenue streams. Look, the most popular way and the way that we all know how to monetize an app is either in-app purchases or ads. We've got a great guest that's going to tell you how to unlock so much more than just those two common ways. Susie, welcome to the show. Welcome to, I'm glad to have you back. We've done the audio only podcast. We've done a couple of things together. And I'm super excited to have you on the live stream. So welcome to the Thank show. Thank you, Steve. I'm so happy to be on with you. So for those who aren't familiar, this is Susie Yalaf Shorts. She is an author. She runs her own meditation studio and she has her own Unplug app. It's a phenomenal app if you're ever looking to just start getting to meditation. If you're like, this is too complicated. I need something very simple to get going. Well, that Unplug is the app for you. And we're going to talk a few things about multiple revenues and the super interesting super fans that Susie is going to tease out a little bit. But Susie, where did it all start? I know it started with the studio, so but talk to us about the journey and then the multiple revenue streams that you've been able to develop. It really started with an idea, Steve, of someone yeah. taught me how to meditate, my mother-in-law. And I was like, what have I not been knowing this whole time about the fact that I can become calm in under three minutes. I wish I had learned that earlier. And at the time it was 2014 and I was searching for places to learn how to meditate. And there was nowhere on the planet where you could just kind of pop in, meditate and leave. It was more like yoga studios, four week programs, retreats, really expensive. So what I decided to do was, you know, Google research take every single class possible. And I realized like meditation needed a makeover. Prior to that, I was a fashion editor working at Vogue, Elle, Marie Claire, and Glamour magazine for more than two decades. And I realized I wanted to create this new thing, kind of like the dry bar where you can walk in, get a blowout, mm -hmm. and then walk out and feel beautiful. I wanted that to happen on the inside. So I had this vision for what the studio would look like, and that's when I created Unplug, and it was April of 2014. I love it. I love it. And then why Why the book, too, Susie? I'm just curious because, you know, you told me to write a book, too, but I was like, wh why, wh what happened after? Why, why the book, too? So what happened afterwards was someone reached out to me. I was covered in the New York Times, um, Los Angeles Times, Good Morning America. Today's show is pretty much on every news outlet because there had never before been a drop-in meditation studio. This was the first one in the world, mm -hmm. actually. And Random House reached out to me, Penguin, to do a book. And I was like, oh my gosh, I would love to do that. So that's when the book came out. It came out in 2017. And then love after you. that, one of our clients came up to us and he said, you know, I love this studio so much. I actually moved to be closer to the studio, but I have to travel all the time. And I'm always so frustrated to like leave my classes and my favorite teachers. Can we record some? He was actually um, an Emmy award winning producer for ESPN. And I said, sure, yeah. let's try it. So we recorded one of our teachers, Laura Nextrom. She was the first teacher we recorded. She happened to be his favorite. And then after that, people were saying, wait, I heard you did one for him. Can you do one for me? I want one on this. I want one on that. So we, it almost became, and like Apple wrote about us as the jukebox of meditation. The reason why they said that was we had so many requests from people who worked in this who came to the studio on specific types of meditations from specific teachers that we just started filming it like that. And, you know, today we have over 1200 videos on the unplugged meditation app. And I like to say that no matter what your problem is, whether it's anxiety, stress, sleepless nights, divorce, whatever it could possibly be, we have a meditation for that. I love that. I love Susie. And I'm not going to interrupt because I love to, I think this is important because I, the takeaway for me is that you listen to your customers. Mm. You were like, Hey, I need, have this need. You talk to your mother-in-law. She taught you about meditation. Then you're like, I have this vision about a studio, like a drop-in. 
And then you talk to your customers who wanted to take it to go. So it wasn't like, hey, and then somebody came up to you and said, let's write a book. And so it wasn't like, you know, Susie just kind of like, this is a great idea, but it's also like backed by customer demand as well. Right. And one of the best things that I ever did was put a suggestion box in the studio and people would just kind of mm. put suggestions in there. And that's how the studio became so good because I would constantly read things that I wasn't even thinking about. And then we would just constantly fix and change and make it more user friendly for all of our live clients. And actually, Steve, yeah. we did something similar for our app clients where we sent out a mass email to all of our subscribers and we said, just one question. And the one question was, how can we be better? That was it. We just gave one question and we could not believe how many people responded to that because it was only one survey question and the amount of information we got from that. It was one of the greatest things. So the email subject line, if I were breaking down, was just one question and then the the content of the email was, how can we be better? And hit reply? Yeah, it was basically um, one one question, I'll take you 30 seconds, click this. And it was a survey monkey. And it was, how can we be better? And we just listened to our customer feedback. Um, and so many people gave it to us. And we changed so many things because of it, like making the videos downloadable, making all different types of things. Was there one that you saw a big difference in either usage or subscription? I guess usage because they're already customers, right? I wish I could remember all of them. It was basically a year long sprint of just so many features. I can't even remember at this point, but we fixed so many things to the point where we're like, I'm not sure we're ready to do that again. <laughs> there was just so <laughs> much there, but we are ready to do that again, but we're doing it on a different level. I love that. And, you know, I guess maybe this is the time to bring it up. You said, Gary Vee said, look, the whole world, this is you saying it. But, well, okay, what did Gary Vee say? Okay, and you so said, Gary Vaynerchuk no, has a quote. And the quote is, as the whole world goes more and more Jetsons, we need to go Flintstones. And what that means for people who are really young and never saw the Jetsons, which was a cartoon, I don't remember what year, but basically it was all about the future and what the future would look like. It still doesn't look like that yet, but we're getting closer and closer. And the Flintstones was a cartoon about these cavemen. And the truth is, is we need to go more Flintstones and connect with human beings because the problem is everything's so digital that it's lacking the person, the personal connection portion. And meditation is really all about connection and the way you make people feel. It's not really about just, you know, sign up and do this. Yeah. I love that too. And I think it's so important, especially in the early days and you know, you've been way established and you're doing phenomenally well in the app store, but it still speaks the volume that you're still doing this. Right. And I think so important in the early days to get that feedback. I, and one of the most, like the proudest things I'm uh, one of the most proudest things that, that I've accomplished is early on when I started the podcast, like I had a small audience, but I engaged with them. I was like, Hey, can I highlight you? And it was towards the end of the year. And I just emailed like my list, maybe five to a thousand people. And like, I love to highlight you and see if you want to come on. And then people came on and they, we shared their stories. And then when I started doing other things, they were like one of the first people to sign up for any new thing that I had. And it speaks to the power of just like trying to engage with your community as much as possible, like not trying to automate every single little thing that you have. Yeah. And that's how I met you, Steve. So I, just for the people who are watching this, I want to tell you a little Steve story behind the scenes is I was watching, I realized when I created the Unplug app, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I was like, there must be like a bunch of tech people who are the big tech people out there? So I went on YouTube and I saw a bunch of things, but the person that I really resonated most with was Steve P. Young. Oh, Oops, thanks, that one. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I ended up reaching out to you, Steve, after I watched all your videos, which yeah. are so good. I mean, I wish I could just have enough time on the planet to watch every single one of the episodes that you've done here because I'm always grateful and learn something from everyone. But I actually went to your, I don't know what number workshop it was in Venice yeah. and we really connected and that took unplugged to such a new level because after that workshop, I hired Steve to actually help us get a feature on the app store. And um, Steve 
connected me to that. And then we ended up going to Apple and we ended yeah. up being invited to be at Apple Entrepreneur Camp. And we spent nine days at Apple learning from the best. So meeting you is very fortuitous. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And congratulations. You've been app of the day ever since you've been on, you know, tons of media channels. And so I'm grateful that you're here spending some time with us as well. All right. Let's say some hi to some people. And if you guys are watching the live stream, say hi, let me know where you're from. And then if you're watching the replay, just leave a comment. Say, Hey, I'm a replay. All right. Uh, Cameron says, please guide on ad model limitations. We have a video coming up just for that. All right. So stay tuned, Cameron. It's in the editing process. Samuel, good to be back. Good to have to see you. Romaine, Angelina, we got Luke. What's happening? Bianca, good to see you here. Kevin's always here from Lakeland and Rudy. Good to see you, Adrian Pronti. We're going to take a look at your app, Mila. She's got some phenomenal success too. Susie, so I'm excited for us to take a look at her app. Ricardo, what's how's it going? And then we've got Cameron. How's the app market nowadays? Susie, how's the app market nowadays? What do you think? Honestly, it's I think it's really about social media right now. So it's really kind of connecting with people on social media, and that's where the big hits are happening. I actually was just watching that video about the guy who just does TikTok, and I loved it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to start doing TikTok now. But I think that's the way to do it. The app market is people love people love meditating and people are loving the Unplug Meditation app. So we've been really lucky, but because it's a word of mouth thing. But I have not found the success from just advertising that some other people have found. I see. So I think the, the, the way I would answer this, Cameron, is I think it's very niche. And if I had to start again, and we, we are doing this right now, but I would start very niche as possible and knowing that I can always scale up. So to Susie's point with meditation, maybe I start with a deep breathing app and then I know I can go up to meditation, but within the niches, I know they're very targeted users. So if I can rank pretty well for them or run some Apple search ads, if I rank well for deep breathing and I have a deep breathing app, then I know they're highly going to, they're going to convert better and I can get to revenues a lot faster. And so I think it's all about the niche play for me. Mm -hmm. And then with an upward trajectory, like some niches just don't have that upward trajectory and you want to mm -hmm. avoid those as much as possible. All yeah. Right. We're more like a smorgasbord <laughs> where it's like you walk yeah. in and you're like, wow, I can do a meditation challenge today. I can do the meditation of the day. I can even do foam rolling. I can get hypnotized to want to exercise, work out really cool. in 19 minutes. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show the foam rolling stuff. You, it was the, it was just shown right here. Yeah. If you go on the home, home screen. Um, oh yeah. So she's a superstar. She actually trains um, Gwyneth Paltrow and a lot of celebrities. Her name is Lauren Roxburgh and she's now living in New Zealand. And I met her um, for, from when I did something at Goop and she basically, I said to her, I want to bring your foam rolling onto the Unplug app. So I did a seven day foam rolling challenge with her, which I love. It just launched three days ago. And I have to tell you, it is just, you feel so good when you do it and doing it with her. She's yeah. so smart. And she kind of tells you everything about it. I wouldn't do day um, one because that's more of a exclamation, but the day two is where it really starts. Oh, hips, definitely hips. Yeah. Yep. So anyways, that's like one aspect, but another big thing that we did Steve this year was hypno habits. Mm. So on. basically hypno habits are led by this woman named Camilla Saker dollar up. And she, I said to her, I needed to hypno get hypnotized to like exercise because I just don't like exercising. And she's <laughs> like, I could do that. So she hypnotized me and I exercised every day for three weeks. And I, this is someone, this is it. So I said, wait, if you could do it for exercise, can you do it also for healthy eating? So I don't eat junk and I just eat healthy mm. for sleep, for more movement, like walking. And she said, sure. So we did this entire series together and I absolutely love it. They're 19 minutes long. Some people are afraid of hypnotic getting hypnotized. But the truth is, is you're not going to bark like a dog. You're not going to be joining the cult. You'll hear every single word she says. And by some miraculous way, it'll inspire you to start doing the thing that you're struggling with. I did a live hypnotherapy with, for another client that they, they, they have like live sessions. So I was like, all right, let me try it out. Uh -huh. I thought it was amazing. And it was yeah. 
live. And so it was like therapy too. So we got to talk about certain things I was dealing with. And then she, we did a hypnotherapy exercise. I don't even know what they call it, like meditation. But we did it. And I was like, well, this is amazing. I just did it in my car. <laughs> I was like, all right. Amazing. Just can do this it really car. is. Um, yeah. Especially when you do privates with hypnotherapists, because, and that's another feature that was recommended to us from Apple to put on our app, the ability mm. to book a private with a teacher, because we have this studio. And yeah, that's cool. so there is that ability when you click on them to be able to book a private with them. I love it. All right. And I know you probably want to address this question. Hey, everyone, I was wondering why the Unplug app has only 1000 users on Google Play. Was it recently launched? Yes, we basically took it down because it sucked. I'll, I, I can't sugarcoat that. Um, it was glitching. It wasn't working. There were so many bugs on it. It turned into just, you know, I needed a net to keep <laughs> all the bugs out. So we ended up just taking the whole thing off. And then we ended up relaunching it, I think like eight months ago, so that it would be more compatible with the Unplug app. And here's what I say. I had to turn down this light. My forehead was shining. Okay. The, look, Android, you need a whole crap a load of downloads to make up for any type of revenues that you're going to see on iOS. So if you're a subscription app, like consider other, the things that we talked about before with the monetization, you really got to consider a lot of different monetization. Hey, Susie, one of the things I know that you found success with was with these corporate, I don't know what you call them, but like these corporate partnerships where you're doing meditation training with like a lot of the big companies out there. Yeah. So unlike common headspace, which is mostly audio in your ear, you don't know who's talking to you and it feels good. Like I really respect both of them. Unplug is live. So you feel the connection with the teacher. So what we decided to do was to bring that into the companies. And actually, we've been so lucky because people who come to the studio are wanting to share it with their companies. So one of the companies that we work with is Condé Nast Corporation. And we'll go in live and kind of teach everybody how to meditate like this, where I'm talking to them on you know, live stream. And then we give them all the unplugged meditation app as a tool to use anytime that they want. And what's so great about the app is under the discovery tab, you can literally search for anything and we have it inside of there. As I mentioned before, we have 1200 videos in there. Wow. And, it, and there's a whole section for work. We even created, this is another example of what we created, meditation quickies. So we created that specifically for Khan and Ask because one of the people in the HR department was giving it to all of her um, employees, but she's like, I have no time to meditate. And I said, okay, I'm going to create an entire, my best of for work under five minutes. And most of these are one minute long and we're, and we're building on that portfolio of, you know, meditations. Hey, you'll get Adrian just tried. Adrian says, I just tried the 60 second power focus meditation. Loved it. There you go. Thank you guys have some money right there. Live. And that's it. And, and that's another thing too, is we produce every single one from our live inside of our Los Angeles studio. So we make sure that you love it. And if it's not resonating with people, we'll take it down. So everything on there is edited by me, produced by me and my team, and then led by the top teachers on the in the country. I love it. Okay. And then Rudy says, yeah, Android sucks. And I say that as a full-time Android developer <laughs> and he knows just because from the sales side, Android development, yeah. it's just more of like the sales just aren't going to be as strong on mm -hmm. iOS. Yeah. One last thing I wanted to point out to Susie was the, so for us with unlocking rep, multiple revenue teams, we were working with this other client and they wanted to test out like having a shop right in their store, like a shop feature. And I was like, look, this is the easiest way we can test it out is they have a strong email list. We get like a 50% open rate with, and it's not a tiny list. It's like tens of thousands. I think it might be even 20,000 plus, but we tested out, Hey, here's our favorite Amazon products. And it was all affiliate links, right? We're just testing mm -hmm. out if that would potentially become one revenue stream. And do you want to build a, you know, shopping Would people buy within the app? So we were testing that out and, it was phenomenal success. Like I, I have a screenshot here that I'll pull up, but it talks about like what you said with the Flintstones, like before you build this flying car, Jetsons, mm -hmm. 
you can start small and start with Amazon. It's very trusted. So for those who have a very engaged email and you're kind of figuring out what else I can do next. Well, you know, I can easily see, I don't know if you have this on here, Susie, but like buy the uh, unplug book, right? And that becomes an Amazon mm -hmm. link. And then if they buy anything else, you still get credit for it. And that's the beauty of Amazon. Like they may come in through your link, but if they buy anything else on Amazon, you get credit for it. So we got credit for a bunch of crap that, you know, wasn't even related to our app or what we were sending within the promo. I'm trying to send it, show you guys too. Wow. But. That is a great idea. We always, we think about, we have a shop inside of our studio in Los Angeles, but we would love to kind of figure out a way to share the unplug hats with people and the unplug shirts and the, the mm -hmm. book. That would be an easy thing to do to link it to Amazon. Okay. It's on my other computer, the screenshot, but I was going to show you guys. It was a hundred bucks, but it was one email. It was, we made a hundred bucks from it. It's like, you know, it gives you something, right? Like I like mm -hmm hitting that hundred dollars because it's just something's like oh, okay i see traction here right so, yeah oh, i want to get into you know that's something that's really interesting for app developers out there is we just launched this thing um actually i could probably show it to you do you want me to show it on my screen oh no you can do it on yours okay go into the unplug app and then you're going to see a bell on the home screen okay like go go to the home screen to the home page there. No, to the, yeah, there. Go to the top there. Okay. So we just started doing in-app newsletters and that has been unbelievable because what we do now is we'll not only be able to showcase the new foam rolling session, but we're now showcasing our teacher training program, our corporate program, um, different things like that. And that has been just really successful for us. What do you, how do you define success? And then I'll, I'll ask the next question later. Okay. Well, we have a high ticket program, which is $3,500 to become an unplugged meditation certified teacher. And mm -hmm. when we posted it inside of our app um, to apply to become a teacher with unplug, we had probably 30 people apply, um, many of wow. which did the program. That's awesome. So that's amazing. That's a really good revenue stream, but we do it for a lot of different things. We could do it like that, or we could do it for our corporate program, or we could do it for clothing. You know, it's just like, if you scroll down a little bit, you can show people that there's a link there too, to learn more. And that can go anywhere. And fortunately, Apple hasn't flagged that. What tool, what platform are you using to build this in-app messaging? I can't answer that question. Only okay. because I, I don't, know. <laughs> you know, we, we use our developers are based in, um, Florida. We use a firm called code firm yep. and basically we do all the designs on our end and then they make sure that our designs happen. That's a great tip. I love it, Susie. Yeah. And Julie more that you like, can think of while we're on this topic. What? Any more that you can think of while we're on this topic? Yeah. Um, so another, another fun tip was when we decided to hit the 1K and up club. So we have a great Apple partnerships person. And he said to me, you know, do you talk to your clients? And I'm like, should I be talking about, oh my gosh, I haven't really been, other than giving them newsletters, I'm not having a two-way conversation with them so, unless they take the teacher training program. So mm -hmm. what we did was we went in the back end, we saw how many people had meditated over 1,000 times on the Unplug app, and we emailed all of them. And they responded, and we said, we want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. And the stories I heard on how they use the Unplug app, I had no idea. Like I, like, I think about it like, oh, is that you? She, oh, she oh, meditated. Her. I saw okay. yeah. all you guys on there. Yeah, she meditated a thousand <laughs> days in a row. And I was expecting this to happen. This is Susie meeting with her users. Right. And so I absolutely love that. So we started doing that. And I started meeting with them. I started learning so much about them. And then I thought, you know what? Why am I just doing this with my 1,000 and up customers? I want to do this with all my customers. So we just launched live coaching calls that we're doing every single month. We did one yes, 
two days ago. And it is mm-hmm. so much fun. We have a surprise guest teacher. So yesterday, Megan Monahan popped on. Then we had Lisa, the 1000 net up user with another person who's from Jamaica and she uses the app and they kind of told their stories. And then we just opened open mic for everybody. And I answered hundreds of questions. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. Let's break that down for a little bit. So you did live <laughs> coaching calls and these are all for your users, right? Like if you're on the email list, you can sign up for free. Are you doing anything beyond just doing the live coaching call? Like, are you repurposing the content? What are you doing with the content afterwards? I put it into the Unplug app. So I decided okay. to make the live coaching call live in the Unplug app. So it's now a topic called live coaching call. Wow. That's cool. And so, I, you know, we're going to see what happens with it. But I think it makes it people realize that, we're not just a digital app. We're human beings working behind this app and we care and we care about their experience and we want to hear from them. So this is just a great way. And we also sent it to two of our corporate clients, Con and Ast and Signature Bank to test it out to see how that would feel. And they came on. Some people, employees from those companies came on and that was really amazing. Yeah. And that, I love and that you're said, like, she said she found it so refreshing that they want to incorporate that into all of the, um, you know, collateral that we send to different corporations so that the, the employees know that they can talk to us live every single month. I love it, Susie. That's a great idea. I'm going to deploy that too. I love that idea so much. I'm going to do that soon. Great. The fact that you met with this person, what, what's her name? And did, 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 Lisa? Lisa? Lisa, Lisa met, you met with Lisa, you highlighted Lisa. It's it's great. And nobody's going to sell your product or your app better than your favorite customers. Like, trust that. Yes. I think it's, it is great for you to do that. I love the idea. It's a win, win, win all around. I love that when it's like win, triple wins. <laughs> That's yeah. the type of strategies. Barantu, hello, Mila. Yep, got you. And then Barantu, oh, you got to say that. So Mila has a question for you, Susie. Uh, I'd love to hear more sure. about how you found an Apple partnerships person and the Apple entrepreneur camp. She's a female as well, female founder. And so, Oh, great. Um, actually, first of all, if you connect with me on LinkedIn and say that you're interested in the Apple entrepreneur program, I will connect you to them and I'll kind of share with you how to do it. Cause I get a link. They post it and share with me every single month. I sent that to you, right, Steve? You said, if you know anybody, let me know, connect me. Yes. And I, I have sent a couple of people your way too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think now they're focusing more on minorities, but I think um, it's definitely always female because there are less female developers than there are male developers, but it's the female needs to be the founder and then anybody else's game. So it doesn't matter who else is working with them. I, know. I think there needs to I don't be know if it's a changed. female developer. I think it might've yeah. changed a little bit. Um, yeah. okay. So anyway, it's the greatest thing in the world. The reason why it happened was, so Steve, I worked with Steve. He helped me create this deck. I sent it into Apple. I didn't hear back and I decided to call them and I, I forgot. Oh no, I start, decided to email them and they actually responded. And I said, I'm coming to Cupertino and I would love to meet with you to show you the unplug meditation app. And they said, I, and I promised them it would only be five minutes. And they said, sure, which was a shock. So I went there and when, after I presented my app, they invited me to join, to apply to join the Apple Entrepreneur Camp. And there it is. We should put this link in the notes. Yeah, um, I will. This is exactly it. And it's run by the most incredible people, um, Esther, Dawn, Andrea, there's so many. And yeah, if you can get in, I highly recommend it. Susie, I use a lot of your tips that you told me from the camp as well. And so I'm like, I don't know what you want to share, but I was like, oh, that's a great idea, Susie. You know, Susie and I talk regularly, but like, you know, every quarter probably. And she shared some tips. I was like, oh, I love that tip. So yeah, yeah, you do need to be a female founder, Mila. So you got that. And then you need to mm-hmm. have a female developer as well. Yeah. So, so I learned, I learned so much from that camp. But the thing that I learned the most is, simplify, like 
just keep it as simple as possible because we want to do everything with our apps. We want to put everything into our apps. And pretty soon you have everything and, you know, your app's not making any money and cost you like a million dollars. The right. key is to focus more on just simplifying it. Imagine that your grandmother is trying to access every part of your app and think of it like that. So it should be that user friendly. If you have to explain your app to anyone, then it's not designed well. Romina asks, have you met any Apple celebrities there? Yeah. I mean, all of them. Esther, I think, is a huge celebrity. <laughs> I met that. I met the lead designer, Doug. I met John. I met the woman who teaches people how to go on stage and present. Um, they were all celebrities. I was so starstruck by them. And it was just, they were could not be a more incredible company to work with. And they gave us everything. It was just uh it was amazing. And I did, I did go over all my notes with Steve. I mean, I could, I, I could open it up and try to like find where those notes are and share it with you. We could do another call on that. Okay. I love everything. It. I learned one about I, entrepreneur camp. What? There's one that I remember here. I'll put it into the yeah. chat, the private chat. Let's see if you want to talk about that. You can see it on the private chat oh. side. All right. Luke has a question and says, code firm looks like an agency, which sounds rather expensive. If you don't mind answering, is the app profitable yet? Uh, yes, it is profitable. And do you know a cheaper one? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> um, it, it is expensive. I haven't uh, found an inexpensive uh, developer firm. I'll be honest with you. And I've been through four, right? I think I'm on my fourth one. Steve has been through all of them with me too. <laughs> The stories I could share. <laughs> Amelia says, I'd be honored to connect, be connected on LinkedIn. Well, Susie's we LinkedIn profile is actually in the, yeah, in, in, the, in the YouTube description and podcast app if you're listening on the podcast as well. And if, then if Angelina. You say code word, I know Steve P. Young, I'll respond to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Susie. And Angelina <laughs> says, I'm a founder and a female developer and it's very encouraging. Say for me, if you, if you know Susie, Oh, that's right. All right. Okay. Susie, anything uh -huh. else we missed before we go into the app audit side of things? Um, I feel like I've shared a lot. I wish I could help Good. people more and I love hearing from other people. And, and are we doing an app audit of my app, which would be great? <laughs> yeah, Susie, we're going to do that privately. <laughs> we're going to help out Mila right now. <laughs> no. I, don't see Actually, the, I, don't, I don't see the chat feature. Where is that? I don't have Oh, that. it's under the private. If you see the stream, and then you hit the, the right, it says private up top on the right-hand side. You try to find that. Oh, well, I see that. Oh, okay. Oh, so wow. Look at all these people who wrote to us. Thank you for all these amazing comments. <laughs> you um, didn't see that. I haven't seen any of them. Uh, I don't see <laughs> right. it. Well, we like to start off Oh, yeah. Every... I'm happy to talk about that. Um, okay. okay so we'll, we'll, save that. We'll, we'll save that. Let's save that for a little bit. Let's okay. get into dad jokes. Actually, Susie, I want to give a shout out to one of my sponsors as well. If you are looking for a more affordable, I think I connected you. I must have because we, we've known each other for years now. But like it's B7 Dev. You know, they are an app development firm. They've been a longtime sponsor. One of my first ever sponsors back in 2013. And Jaime and I have stayed in touch. And we built this relationship and this friendship together. So if you are looking for a more affordable app development firm that I'm closely tied with as well, it is B, the number seven dev dot com there as well all right and then mila an says oh that would be an interesting yeah. question is to kind of understand what is expensive what is inexpensive how much should someone actually spend every month on development i would love to i wish i could get comparison bars on that like how much you know smaller apps are spending on development you know here's one thing and i, I would say the same advice to you, Susie, because I think you're developing so much great content within the app. And this is what I told my other client was, you have a lot of great features. You have a lot of great engagement. Like everything's there. You don't need more features. We need to focus on more users. For her, it was that. Right? She had more user goals. And I think for, I think I would probably say the same to you. It's like, it's mm -hmm. not like, I'm like, pause development. Just pause it. Like you, your app is great. It's phenomenal. It's for you. It's been featured by Apple plenty of time. 
it's an app of the day. You have a great relationship. So it's not that you need more features to accelerate the growth. And it's just these tips that you shared with us with the, the in-app messaging, that you called it the in-app newsletters. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that I would be focused on versus mm -hmm. trying to build more features or more courses or all that stuff. Because right. there's been, you know, like I just talked to a client recently and he's like, Steve, you know, ever since we worked together, it's been growing. And then the fact is I haven't built any new features. And, you know, he's like, you told me to increase the price. I did it to make more money. And it's mm -hmm. like, and I, I haven't built any new features. And he's like, I've just been chilling, <laughs> vacationing. I'm like, bro, don't make me jealous. <laughs> but he's like, I just been chilling off these revenues. And so, and we bought an app and we went, you know, we 10, 10 X the revenues from a thousand to $10,000 a month, no new features whatsoever. It's just the pricing onboarding and just tweaking all those made a huge mm -hmm. difference. In that. Right. So, okay. Uh, all right. So. Mila says, we just implemented our first ad with the onboarding experience. Uh, we love and would love to talk about what we did. Some ideas we have for other ad placements, our user spikes from our TikTok and anything you think a newbie needs to know. Now, Mila has done phenomenally well. I'm a, she said, I can share this on the live stream. So, and I would love, I told her, love to have her guest, but it is, let me share her app too. Mm -hmm. So it's an outfit maker. It's a type of AI. Mila, I need this. My daughter picked out this outfit. It's actually pretty nice, I think. <laughs> but so I have my own little AI when she's nine years old. But one year ago, she went viral on TikTok. And then her highest spike was 300,000 monthly active users. It was amazing. And then they're going to come out with their official launch soon. So I was like, Mila, we got to talk because I love your approach. She soft launch. She did a bunch of TikTok campaigns. So you should be on TikTok for sure. And mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, it's like really focusing on the soft launch, fig figuring out the features. And now she's ready for version 1.0. So let's take a look at her. Anything you want to say from the App Store presence right here, Susie? Any feedback you have for Mila? No, I think it looks good. Like it. Yeah, I think Mila, for me, it's a little busy, but hey, you know, that's just my opinion, right? Like, I think I, the colors in the back are kind of like too much going on. And I could pull up Unplug as well. Like, it's, I love the simplicity of the Unplug screenshots. It's like mm -hmm. white and just says everything. So, one of the things that I've noticed too is from the screenshots perspective, the main keyword that you're going after, maybe outfit maker, you know, I know those have pretty decent traffic. I've worked with the couple of outfit maker apps and you want to just lead with the main keyword that you're targeting that has the highest volume even if you're not number one because when people search for that keyword and they see it big and bold on that first screenshot then like oh cool let me check out that app. yeah and as a former fashion editor at you know the yeah, top magazines, right. i have to say i like the outfit get out get stylized outfits i like the outfit that they put into their screen so that's good it looks okay good. Yo, that means a lot <laughs> coming from Susie then. <laughs> it really does. Uh, I can really honestly does. say that. Yes, it really <laughs> does. Yeah, I'll show you Susie's screenshots as well. Susie, do you have any results on like, have you tested the video versus no video? Oh, you know what? From Apple, they basically said that video is the best way to go. You want your first okay. screen to be a video. So we were trying to show yes. how we're real and we showed the different teachers. What makes Unplug so different is that we actually have videos of our teachers talking to you. And then this that is, is something that we kind of did. Um, I think the messaging needs to change a little bit and be a little bit more updated, but yeah. Yeah. See, you can see simple, the, the meditation app for people who think they can't meditate and then you have words too. So that's what I yeah. mean with that. The back feel feel a little busy for me. Right. Okay. Let's. Mars is pretty over. simple. Yeah. What do you think about my outfit, Susie? I mean, you don't see the bottom, but I think it's good. I think you look good. <laughs> I always, I always like you. I don't even look. I only <laughs> notice bad outfits are phenomenal outfits. Uh, all right. Let's take a look at your app, Mila, and then yeah, we'd love to have you on in the future. We're so glad you're here. You're fine. Uh, now, full disclosure, I'm on my older iPhone 7 Plus, so just take that, and then it is on iOS 15, just in case this is not showing up the way you wanted it to show up, Mila. All right. Uh, Susie, this 
about this, the, the private chat that we did. So like this onboarding process, you want to think about it as a, the, you remember the private chat that we just said? Oh, yeah, people. as a drunken yeah. download. Okay, so one of the things that one of the um, people at Apple told me is they talk about drunken downloads. What is a drunken download? A drunken download is when someone is at a party at a bar and they tell someone, oh, you have to download this app. And the person's like, that sounds so cool. I'm going to do it every day. And they download it. And the next day they open up their app. And or they don't ever see it again, but then they show it shows up on their phone and they say, what's this app? So they don't know where it came from or how they even got it, but they open it back up. And so that is the key is you want it to be capturing them from the get go. Yeah. So I think this is a great job, Mila, of just saying like what you really do, right? Like gives you recommendations of what to wear, what to buy based on your closet and style. Get started. Let's see, Steve. <laughs> I'll give you my email. Before people, I get hate mail. This is, you know, my test phone. So I'm using tests. <laughs> Notice I was on everybody's email list and I was just using my normal <laughs> email and password. Uh, okay. Let me hide this real quick. As I go through this sign up portion. Okay. Oh, it's still too weak. Ah, Mila, what do you want from me? Maybe just recommend a small password. Uh, I don't know. I just used a normal password. <laughs> uh, let's try one more. This is the worst part about having an app is watching someone. Like, this should be a basic... Um, you should do a video just on people trying to download an app and sign up and what that experience is like. Cause it is hard. Like sometimes people get glitches on mine. I'm with them as they're logging on and it's so frustrating. And so. And it, I think it's so important to do as then that's why I love doing these things because then you can see me and I, that's why I wait. I don't prepare anything because I want you to get that first time user experience. And I know mm -hmm. enough of the app space that I can just, wing it like pretty much wing it but like you know you need to see me go through it and I, i'm struggling here because it keeps saying that my passwords are too weak which you know, i don't know if you care that much if my passwords are strong or not it's my outfit something like bank card so like i don't really care about my outfits yeah. as much as my you, you know like bank card and stuff so anyways mm -hmm. this is getting a little bit more difficult for me and so that also is a problem. So she definitely should fix that because then people will just quit. And that's what yeah. you should know is if it's too hard to get to the juice of your app, people are just going to be like, you know, what? forget it. I'm out. How many have you done where you just like tried to sign up and then you gave up? A lot. And there's been plenty of times where I've been wanting to give up when I've do doing this live <laughs> and I don't because I'm doing it live and the, especially if they're in the comments, I really give it my best effort, but yes, there's been a lot of times. All right, cool. We're in. So one of the things, Mila, I don't know what your monetization strategy is, but one of the tips that Jake, who was supposed to be on last week is we now pushed it on. He's got a great tweet. He said, look, you want the magic number is showing your paywall twice. All right. And one of my clients, I told him that, and we tested out early results are really positive. So what he did was show during the onboarding process, he has an account creation. He has a shows the paywall, then asks the user to create an account, then shows the paywall again. And Jake says from superwall.com, you, the magic number is two paywall views during that first time user experience. Cause people who buy, buy during that first time user experience. So you want to maximize the amount of views that your paywall gets. So again, I don't know what your monetization is, but if it is to try to monetize this in the future, you want to get to as much paywall views and forcing people to sign up like this. There is a good barrier. This is never going to be hundred percent because that first open to paywall view needs to be as close to hundred percent as you can possibly get it. And by asking me to create an account, you're not going to get to that close to 100%. So my, yeah, I, I can give you some data later on. I have to make sure I don't share everything. Uh, I like colors, yeah. 
I am probably in the middle. Yeah, probably in the middle for that too. Love this. Love that there's an ad here. Mila, this is great. We'll add. Yeah, why not? Maximize it. I love that. Very cool. Susie, I do this all the time. I go on Pinterest and I'm like, what's a gray pants outfit? <laughs> and so I'm always, so I say that meaning like I'm always looking for inspiration and let's see if I can find some inspiration here. Yeah, I like this. Okay. What do you think, Susie? You're the fashionista. I can't hear you. Oh, I think you're muted. I said I like it. You need black like pants, it. black shirt. You can get into a nightclub in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> Super simple. You need a here. black leather jacket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Confident. Click to see if the weather. Yeah, I like it. Let's see if there's a any type of. Yeah, I don't know if she. Maybe on the back end, the change is coming up. Yeah, we are. In, all right, cool. All right, it looks like there's a lot of comments that we're making. Oh, shit, this is our server strict. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Too short, but we're going. Yep, okay. They got some feedback. Overall, Mila, I don't. I don't see anything wrong with the app. I don't know if you want to share any other details that you have planned, but I think the app is phenomenal. I like the way you're, I guess you're trying to monetize through getting people to buy within the app too. I like that, you know, you have this messaging so you can see if people are tapping on shop, you're like, Hey, people are tapping on shop. And the, one of the things I might try to do is these women shopping will not work. Maybe instead of showing this messaging, like showing some outfit ideas or like, you know, outfits and then seeing if I tap on that and then just getting some sense of like, yeah. oh, okay, he is tapping on some shop, right? Like, cool, big changes are coming soon. So maybe instead of having big changes coming soon, right directly, right when I tap on shop, allow me to see certain things and see if I tap on that. Then you have an idea of like what I'm most interested in as well. Because this, this could have just been a mistake. So that's... Pronti, is there I'm machine learning? learning? I mean... Yeah. So it, it just learns as you go what you like. And I love that. Yeah, me too. Me too. Okay. Let's Great. See. One thing I did want to ask you was you have phenomenal reviews. And you said you started implementing this review gate thing as well. Yeah, like your, your reviews are like all very close to five, if not 5.0. I can definitely look at it right now. Okay. What happens? Yeah. You can show everybody my reviews, show the most recent. I'm actually really proud of that. And I'm happy to share it with you, but what happens on is. app masters, what happens on app masters has to stay on app masters. Is that a deal? <laughs> I want to see that in the chat. What happens on app masters has to stay at app masters. Okay. Um, okay. I was wondering how you actually withdraw your procedure to that. Okay. Oh, I don't pay my developer out. No, I pay my developer. I, they don't get any percentage of my um, app rev. They get a small percentage my, from my bank account. I pay them. Okay, how do I get so many five-star reviews? Other than the fact that this app is five-star. But we built in something um, that I saw on this thing called Home Gym. And I was like, how do they have so many positive reviews. This app is mediocre. And then I realized what they did. So they prompt you and they say, if they say, how do you rate this app? And if you rate five star, it goes, it says, can you, would you care to rate us at, on the app store? And it makes it really easy for you. Can you, I don't know if, I guess it didn't pop up for you. It makes it really easy. If you rate it four stars, it says, how can we be better? And then it goes to the email. Um, supported unplugged.com. So you've in our in app, it's either five star, how thank you so much for sharing how much you love unplug, or if it's four star and below, we then redirect them to um, supported unplugged.com and then we get the feedback and then we make it better. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. And, you know, we had, I'm trying to remember the person's name. She was phenomenal. She talked about this. It was a magazine company. I even forgot the app. I'm forgetting everything, but it's just a little pop-up. It's like, how would you review the app? And then would you give it five stars? So she actually led it 
Susie, she said, would you give this app five stars? They said, yes. It's, I don't know if you said that too. I was looking for it, but they said, yes. They would take them to the review prompt automatically. If they said no, send them to the email. See, ours is more like when you but click said, five, when you click five stars, it goes to the, so for those of you, I think you have to meditate three times on the unplug app and then you can screen grab all of our, the way that we did it. But as you can see from, from Apple, it's really working and we barely get any four star reviews. So we're just really lucky. Yeah, and then you want me to go to the recent one? Is it the one that's yeah, highlighted? If you, to, if you go to reviews and you go, go most recent, see all sort by most recent. And the then one on Wednesday, easy to use stick. Yeah. This two years now. This you is see okay, any amazing. Four, amazing. I mean, there's like yeah. no four star reviews. And the reason why is yeah. really, I think, because of that. And also, we got no reviews when we had no in app prompt. It was very rare. In fact, I had to like ask people to, that liked us to review us. Um, now it constantly is prompting people in the app. So that's been really helpful. Yep. And the other thing, so if you want, you can do both, you can do the review, we call it review gating, but you can do that, like ask them for the five and then take them. But one thing that, uh, Mila said too, was I would love to hear review tips. So one thing you can also do Mila is show it more often. So, so you probably don't even need to wait to three, but I've been saying second open is enough but it, people have reported back. That's why I love this community is if you can show it on the first open after the onboarding, mm -hmm. it does work too. And a friend of mine, it's about 1%. You should be getting about 1%. If you show it often enough, about 1% of your downloads should be leaving you reviews. And we mm -hmm. have data to back this up now. I think okay. we do it after mm -hmm. they've meditated with us three times because we want to make sure that they, you know, using the product. Really love it. Yeah. Uh, the was Not down. for the drunken download people. <laughs> <Right>. Okay. <laughs> uh, this we got this next app it's doing phenomenally well. This is let's see, Huey monetization general first impression from the yeah general first impression from the user perspective. So Huey, good job. Like I love this category thirty two under education. Great solve math problems in a snap, kind of like photo snap or photo math. I should say, mm -hmm. uh, choose between different methods. So really cool, really great screenshots. He he has video as well. No, we've actually seen mixed results with video, but maybe, you know, I trust Susie. So she says, Apple says video is the way to go. Let's go with video. And then mm -hmm. in app events, this is great. And he's got some subscription and we'll take a look at his app. Okay, let's get into Huey's app real quick. And we're running late. Oh, I like the way down. I like the way that it looks. It's nice and bright. Yeah, me too. Me too. I want to see if I can write a math problem down. Can you take a picture of it? And so, then that's how that's kind of crazy. This is interesting. So I do. I found that sometimes video actually increases conversions. Right. And uh -huh. so on this paywall and he opens with the paywall, which I wouldn't really do, or Huey, I might just add some messaging up top just to kind of remind people, solve math problems faster, ace your algebra quiz, whatever it is, just to remind people what the app is to, to Susie's drunken download point. Mm -hmm. so, and then I like that you're going long, which we've been talking about, longer paywalls are converting better. So no more struggle with math, I like that. Yeah, he has all the elements that we've talked about too. Bullet points, testimonials. And then, Huey, what you want to do is make sure you have this continue back on the bottom. Because once I get down here, like you're forcing me to back go back up. Now, from your, I'm just judging from your reviews. You seem to be doing really well. I have seen this happen too, where it's like this toggle between free trial. So I do like this. And then, yeah to Rudy's point, Rudy, I know you're in the comments, but like you see $89 per year, like you might think about increasing the price of your own app, Rudy. All right. So, so, okay. Now he's showing me, now he has the onboarding. Let's see if he shows the paywall again. Allow access. I like this. So Huey, one thing I would do, and this client that's in the video editing space, 
ask for this first. If you lead with this, you get the user more engaged, enabling the camera. Then you show your paywall. Then you can, and then maybe you show your paywall again. That should help you out a little bit. But I would almost start with a, a big screen of the drunken download reminding people what this app does one time, and then this screen, paywall, the thing that I just saw, paywall again, and then homepage. All right, here. Oh, uh, what was the reason? Oh, okay. Interesting, Susie. She's ask, he's asking me why I skipped it. Why you skipped what? Not, uh, free trial. Why I didn't buy. Want to try the app first. So he's asking me right away. He's asking for a survey of why I didn't buy. There you go. Good job. Wow. Free premium. What's this? Oh, okay. I don't remember. Yeah, I always look at the second open, so I may actually go to Mila's second open as well. Pronti. I should say Pronti. Okay, Pronti. Yeah, okay. Second open. That's pretty amazing that you can just take a picture and get the answer. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, I told my son. Like, I'm not no going to tell my son about this app. <laughs> Until so, it. you see what Huey does. He does open his app on the second open, like the paywall is shown. That that does work, right? The more here's a simple rule: the more paywall views you get, the more revenue you're gonna make. It's that simple. The more mm -hmm. people see this paywall, you show them you're not being look. You're making it easy for them to x out. We can all x out. We we're all used to ads and xing out of things, so mm -hmm. you're not bothering your users amazing product like Susie has you should be like look i trust that you're going to feel better with this product you're going to answer more math problems you're going to feel less stress you're going to find the best outfits with this product and so i'm going to put it in your face like hey because mobile users are so fickle like this isn't like this content play that i currently have right like i'm not going to be in your face all the time people don't even know i have an agency half the time so I, that's okay with me but with mobile they're fickle they're going to leave the percentages of people opening your app the second time, it's very, very low. So you want to hit them with your paywall as much as you possibly can. And it looks like he's hitting people with the paywall and then going to hit them with an ad, which I really like too. So I was going to suggest the same thing, Yui. Yeah, I'm glad there's an ad play here too. Because you can e easily put like, hey, do you want, you know, no more ads, no interruptions there. Mm -hmm. Study better without ads. So if I hit limit free with limited tit, the limited free with limited options and I see an ad, that's okay. I said no to removing ads. So I don't mind that you're doing this. And Huey, one of the things I think you can start like really, you know, you know your users more, but that Amazon trick. So, you know, maybe this calculator, like in the more section or in the whatever section you say like top calculators, right? And then you can probably get a percentage of sales that people buy on Amazon. I know Blinkist mm -hmm. does this well to like they will summarize a book and then if you want to buy the full book they'll get a percent of that so think about how you can just add some revenue streams beyond just the the in-app purchase and the ads so don't mind Susie anything you want I love that anything? idea Steve and I think this app is genius I had no idea that something like this was even available yeah. I wish I had known about it when I was in high school yeah right <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rudy says, outrageous. Let's try it. I'm with you, Rudy. What's up, Joe? Good to see you again. Luke says, I really like Pronti. There you go. I really wish I had a social login. I'm sure Mila's going to build that as well. And then, great suggestion. I think I got to everything else. Susie, congratulations on all your success. Once again, it is Unplug. You can go to Unplug, just search for Unplug in your favorite app store preferably iOS, and then <laughs> unplug.com to learn more about that. Yeah. Actually, if you go on my social media, um, uh -huh. unplug, 
meditation on Instagram, there's a code for a free 30 mm-hmm. days and you don't have to put your credit card in. You just kind of can do the free trial without a credit card. So try that. I hope you enjoy it. Steve, thank you so much for taking the time and inviting me onto your podcast. It's such an honor. You have no idea. And I loved looking at those two apps. I think both of them are great and I was really excited to be a part of them. Well, thank you, Susie. It's great to have met you and then consider you a friend for the long run, a lifetime friend. Yes. Susie, what do you even do a dad joke? So I'm gonna give you a dad joke, okay? Yeah. You ready for this? All right. I'm Susie, ready for which it. Which celebrity, which celebrity is almost <laughs> let me rephrase it. Take two. <laughs> which celebrity <laughs> is always ready for cereal? No idea. Who? I don't Reese you but her spoon. Reese oh, with her spoon. <laughs> and she likes the unplugged meditation app. That's why I saved it for you. That's why I saved it for you. <laughs> Not an accident. <laughs> when I saw that, Dave, like, got to save it for Susie. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Is the 30 day pinned somewhere or if you just click here? Okay. So if you click there, um, if you click on the link, do you see it? Link to? Yep. And then here you go. Yep. And then free 30 days on the unplug app. And you click there. We created a page where it has the code and you just put your information in, redeem your gift and it's yours. And then you can do it on um, Android or on iOS. That's awesome. Great strategy here. Really look, so he's got amazing following 71,000 followers on Instagram. Great way to interact with your followers, hook them up with a free offer, really get them to engage and turn your followers into actual customers. Great strategy there. Best way to end it, Susie. I love it. And you know what? Thanks. People agree. Luke says, thanks, Susie. Thanks, Steve. Great episode. And then Mila says, you guys are awesome. Thank All right. You. <laughs> next week. Let me see. What do I got next week for you guys? Oh, yeah. Next week, a good friend of mine, Hannah, is going to come on to the show. We're going to talk all about the complete app sales funnel from growth to engagement. And then one thing that I'm really focused on is how do you get people to engage when you're completely free app, right? You're completely free, giving all your features away, but you got to get them to come back and use the app. And that's all you care about, getting them to use the app. So we're going to walk through in the entire activation funnel from the top line all the way to the bottom line there. So join us every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Promise you I won't be missing any more Fridays for the foreseeable future. And once again, it is Unplug. And go check out Instagram Unplug Meditation to get your 30 days for free no credit card required Susie, thank you for being an amazing friend thank you for sharing your knowledge with us thank you steve thank you all for listening i'll see you next week bye <laughs>